Hey guys, Kyle the Death Knight of Enemy here, bringing you my review for Fire Force Season 2, Episode 2. So, starting off, this episode introduces us to Fire, to Fire Force Company 4, like Special Fire Force Company 4, and the tra and as well as the Train Academy. And as someone looking back on the material, one thing I kind of appreciate about this introduction, the introduction to this like Training Academy, that I never did during my first read through is how Shinra not only kind of flexes on his peers when they're first introduced, but just overall we see that he has this very, he has very fond memories and just fr a friendly bond with them. Whereas if this was another shonen, he would have both been the outcast and the one who had the poorest performance. I mean, and don't get me wrong, he was kind, I guess he was kind of already, already an outcast with the already an outcast by being called a demon but but in this in this case like what like th 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 there are people who just weren't who just almost immediately weren't afraid to approach him whereas or, 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 so like he, he he didn't even if he was an outcast he didn't like remain an outcast for, for pretty much very long um I like and I like how in general it does kind of flip the switch on on that whole anime trope of of the of the main character being the outcast because in this case he wasn't really in a he he was he wasn't really an outcast to begin with he he wasn't too much of an outcast to begin with, um, and honest and honestly it's 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 done in the most natural way like we we we, we it's it's done in a very natural and simple way like we we from the very moment these characters are introduced we we basically get their basically get 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 their connect get their connection get, get the connection with Shinra and how much he, he he values their friendship which which basically makes the which makes the what happens later in the episode all the more all all the more kind of like like in some ways just gut wrenching and just kind of and just like you, you really don't you really you really don't want to see these people fight you really don't want to see these these characters fight each other fight each other pretty much um <clears throat> Now, just kind of getting this out of the way, art and animation would, for this episode was definitely a step up compared to last week. And, as, and especially af, after this episode, I can now say with guarantee that season two is going to have a much smoother production than season one. Like, I I don't want to I don't want to jinx it, but basically barring any problems, I think I think we can definitely say that season two overall whether it's with story, art and animation, what or just adaptation in general, yeah, like season two is definitely going to be a, a much a much better product than than in any of the like problems that happened with season one. Um, and now, I mean, obviously, if I now obviously I do have to admit a, a, a lot of a lot of what the uh, a, a lot of moments in this in this episode were less graphic than in the manga, but but that's not really necessarily too much of a problem as it's something I, I've I've kind I've come to expect from, from covering anime and manga on this channel that the anime will always be less graphic and detail compared to the source material like like it's it's not necessarily a problem where or, or they skipped they skip scenes no no they gave us those scenes but it just was it wasn't as as graphic as it was in the manga which is just i think something that we just have to kind of live with at this point that, that there are very few cases where the anime is going to be as graphic as the manga i think and this is unfortunately one of those times i think um <sighs> Of course, obviously, the bigger thing to talk about with this with this episode is is the meeting with, with basically Shinra and, and pretty much Captain Hogg. And while the whole conversation is in its own way we is in, in its own way like way like kind of very weird, very kooky, and very funny to watch, it also like the, there are moments and just details we learn. Just, just through this one conversation that shows the dark side of the Adola link and the Adola bursts, and how easily this, easily it can warp a person's mind as well as their own perceptions of reality over an ex, over an extended period of time of, of being exposed to, to basically the, the the pretty much world that the the Adola link lives in, and that in itself shows like the, the like the, the, the this basically whole the, this basically whole um this basically whole episode in a lot of ways it was a cautionary tale it was a very cautionary tale about how 
you really have like in order to properly wield this power called a dola burst and a dola link you really need to have an ironclad will in order to truly harness the power it offers because if you don't then the power itself will consume your sanity as we see it doing that exact thing to Shinra in this episode like he was like like Shinra was basically being controlled by the by this by by pretty much by this other entity who was who, who was taking advantage of his very uh, of his very of his very mind and that in itself it just it, it really really sets up a very interesting dynamic going forward where where Shinra is going to where Shinra is going to have to learn in order to how to properly in order how to properly wield this power because the other thing too is that with with the true nature of this power being revealed, this also provides insight into how easily the white clad have been radicalized by by the by, by the by, by the Adola power and, and the Adola link. Like they've like they, 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 they've they've been they've been in some ways I think consumed and radicalized themselves by the but but by, by their exposure to the Adola link. But I think they themselves have also learned how to control that power. So it's like. So, so now that they're basically what they're doing is they're taking advantage of those of those who have managed of those who have been exposed to that power and and using it as a way in order to radicalize people to their cause, while also I think in their own way like teaching them how to control it, which I think is I think is kind of a sim I think we can assume like is is kind of what happened to to basically to show now is that he is that he he was kind he in some ways he managed to awaken his adult link, but he was also kind of he was in some ways being over. He he managed to control it to an extent where he where he also he also would he had given into the power as well. Um, now to, and talking adaptation of this episode is interesting because in some areas it actually did better than the manga I think j j just from the art and animation standpoint. But its biggest flaw is that the first half of the episode with the meeting between Shinra and Hog is. That, that that was like the biggest the weakest weak point I think of this episode because in the manga like look from Okubo he gave many like when 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 basically when when look from Okubo had drawn out that whole sequence and that whole like discussion between Hog and Shinra he when he drew that out he gave many different like angles and perspectives during that whole discussion and that and by doing that it gave the conversation that very chilling sense of uncertainty and whether or not you would like like there's this chill in the air that said okay can we even trust w what captain hog is saying or or what or what game is even playing like it, it just gave this very like this very tense feeling to, to the whole conversation but with the anime like don't get me wrong they tried to they tried to imitate a few of the angles here and there but they always kind of fell back on this one wide angle shot which lacked like which just by focusing on just that one shot it lacks it gives the conversation that lack of unnerving energy so yeah um aside from that though it was a much bet it was still a much better episode than last week uh the only th other thing is pacing wise outside of the meeting outside of the meeting with, with pretty much hog with, with basically hog uh and the ending the the story didn't really progress too much further than that, which is is also kind of weird to say because we, we, we it's one of those it's one of those cases where we, we we actually did cover a lot, but but the but the majority of the material we covered was kind of focused on that battle between like but between Company Four and Shinra, between Company Four Arthur and Shinra. So, uh, yeah, it's 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 one of those weird times where I I remember. And and through that, it kind of it kind of gives me a bit of a reminder that, that the setup for this arc, at least just in what we got in this episode, was a little bit of a slog to get through in the beginning. Like it, it was mainly focused in the beginning. It was just focused on that main one fight, and then only later on did, did we finally get into the meat and potatoes of this of this arc. But yeah, so a little bit of a problem there, I guess. But although. Although, although that's not to say it wasn't it wasn't like terrible either though, because the fight itself was definitely worth it, and just the fact that Arth 
And honestly, like, just the fact that Arthur was there to begin with shows that, like, Obi is not a dumbass. O Obi knew that, that, that basically when he, that when he gave Shinra this this assignment, he knew something like this would happen. So he, 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 had, he had Shinra go because... He had Arthur go because he he already knew something like this would happen, which shows that Obi's got a lot more insight on this thing than than than, than we give him credit for, I think. Um, and actually, speaking of Arthur, we, we do dive into his backstory with this episode and how it actually does provide an interesting amount of emotional weight to his whole his whole idea his whole idea and his whole fantasies of being a knight, as as we see, it stems from his father almost encouraging his imagination early on, but. When they disappeared, that also ended up becoming his own motivation and drive to become someone who never abandons others in need. And I think that's, I think that's, I think in that one moment, that that one scene of Arthur, of Arthur with his family, and Arthur just kind of standing in that in that dark in that dark apart apartment with 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 the letter from his parents. That I think is where the art and animation definitely peaked for me. But. Uh, so yeah, we get a nice little insight into what into what exactly drives Arthur's whole 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 goal, his 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 whole his whole ideals in life, and it does stem largely from his parents. So there's that. Uh, but yeah, guys, that's all I got for this review. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Control. Dead man of anime. Signing off. Later, guys.